In this video, we are going to uh, quickly see about the n-grams, how to implement the n-grams over a financial data set. And uh, so we are actually importing all the required uh, uh, data, uh, sorry, required uh, headers, I mean like importing all the libraries which we require. And uh, then I, am, I have actually put the contents in the uh, Google Drive itself. So I have imported the Google Drive and then I am taking this all data dot CSV okay so I have the data here in the uh, Google Drive itself okay I have imported the data here so this is the path which I have used so when you look at it uh, uh, look at it uh, here uh, you could see that I have actually import now you are not able to see but I have actually imported the data and you could actually uh, in get the data from here okay so you can actually use the data from here itself that is what I am doing and uh, then I'm just getting the information about the data set. So data set has got two columns, one is uh, sentiment and news headline and uh, almost about 4,846 uh, data is there. So you're looking for uh, not null, I mean like uh, uh, is there missing values or null values that you could do it by using ease uh, df, df is your data frame dot ease na. So uh, uh, you will be able to understand about the uh, not null values or missing values uh, so not null not not null it is null values or the missing values by using this particular thing and you are individually getting the counts of the sentiments here sentiments here so neutral values you have got almost 2000 and negative and all these things these are the three different sentiments which you have it in the uh, retail uh, I mean like the data financial data so neutral positive and negative these are the three things right so it has got three different categories and uh, this is what you can understand now the first one is basically the feature extraction so feature extraction for that we need to identify uh, the shape shape in the sense like you know how many values in sentiment and how many values in news uh, this thing so we can actually split your train so this is kind of the training of the data so this kind of a uh, classification itself so you can actually split the data as uh, training and testing so for that uh, a most common uh, you know uh, function which we all use is train uh, underscore test underscore split. So here uh, we are actually taking you know 60 percentage of the training and 40 percentage of the testing and uh, uh, so how could you how, how did you actually reach the 60 40 split uh, basically if I could say is that you know you have to do it by experiential process you have to experiment a lot and ident identify which one is actually the best one for your data set uh, so that is one way that's the best way as well and uh, so you can get this you know train underscore uh, test underscore split and this is from the uh, sklearn uh, library and in the sklearn you know you have model selection so inside the model selection you have this one so now uh, how can you actually use it so you can use it by uh, giving this train underscore split underscore script where you are giving the x value your y value and your test size and understand that you know you will get your uh, training here in x train and testing here in x test and y train and y test so these are the parameters which you will get right so these are the data where you will have it for your uh, training and testing and your y training and testing right so because you have two different parameters right so you have training and testing for each so for each one if you could see these are the the shape is nothing but it will simply give you the number of the data inside each one right so when you look at the x-train you will have this uh, data so these are the data so right so now what we have to do is that we have to convert the uh, arrays arrays is this is an array so numpy arrays into a pandas data frame because when you work with the data frame uh, it is easy for you to work with the data frames for concatenation and etc so what you have to do is that uh, you need to uh, concatenate uh, your x-train and y-train right and uh, then you have to also concatenate the x test and the y test right so this is what you have to actually do it so you are actually uh, taking df1 which is nothing but pd dot data frame dot x train right uh, so this is basically part of your uh, news and then again you are uh, you have to do it with your uh, df2 is for your sentiment and then you can actually concatenate both of them by you know using the simple concatenate function and uh, access one so for the access one you are actually concatenating so when you look at the data you have actually concatenated both now your training info is like you know you have uh, so much of data in, in your in your news and the sentiment right this is what you have done so in the same way you have to do it for your x test and y test also so this is for the training data set which you have done now you have to do for the testing data set also so here also you are following the same thing you are actually uh, you know taking your converting so this is basically your conversion you are converting and then concatenating right so this is your test data set right 
So now as you have actually prepared with your data, now we have to do the uh, pre-processing of your data. So there are certain pre-processing techniques that uh, we have done. So I am not going you know uh, one by one, but you know you are actually removing the uh, punctuation. So that is one thing which you are actually doing. Okay, so this lambda function is kind of the unknown function which you can use it uh, in Python. So this is a beautiful feature in Python. Uh, beautiful function uh, called this is called as an unknown function. So this unknown function can always append uh, any number of arguments or append any number of uh, you know I mean like uh, so uh, you can append it with any number of functions also. So this is the beauty of it. So you're basically taking the df of train. Okay, and you are applying like uh, remove punctuation of x and so that, that is what you are actually doing. So you are storing the punctuation free text into a new column called clean message. Okay, so that is what you are doing. So uh, you have actually removed all the punctuation, then you are actually removing the stop words, then you have to generate the uh, n grams, right. So when you are actually generating the n grams, you have, uh, you have two different parameters, one is actually the text itself and the uh, n gram number. I mean like which refers to the uh, text data for which we want to generate the given number of n-grams all right the number of the n-grams to be generated respectively. So one is the text and one is the n-gram the number of the gra n-grams right. Uh, so firstly uh, word tokenization is done where the stop words are ignored okay. So in this particular section if you could see this is how the n-gram is uh, so you are actually giving the text and the n gram. So, here the n gram is actually given as 1 ok. So, that means like you are taking each word at a time. So, in the words what you are doing is that you know you are actually taking each word at a time and you are doing the text dot split right and you are also removing all the uh, stop words right and uh, then what you are actually doing is that uh, mm, uh, you are actually you know uh, finding a temporary variable and joining it again with the space right. So, say when you uh, give generate n grams of the sun rises in the east comma 2. So, here I am just giving this is the text right. This is the text and this is the number of n grams which you want. Say you want 2 grams that means that the sun, sun rises, rises in like that you know it has to actually give right and uh, wherever you have this uh, uh, you know this uh, stop words you know that will be removed also right. So, rises in in the uh, the east right. So, this is what it is. So, it will actually remove these two and the sun ok and then sun rise uh, the sun then you have sun rises then you have rises east these would be the words which will, will actually which you will actually get it right. So, if you are actually putting it as 1 you will get the single ones and you if you get it in the 2 you will get it as 2. So, that is all. So, here you are actually giving it as 3 that means that you know you will get the e individual words after the stop word removal and you will also get the uh, the phrases like you know the three different phrases like kind of words. So, this is how actually it is done. So, this is one way of generating the n grams right. Now, uh, now there is uh, another technique you know it is nothing where it is it is almost the same but a little bit more different technique. So, now you know how to create the uh, n grams. Now, uh, for creating the unigram what you have to do is that create unigram for each new record each news record belonging to each one of the three categories right. Then you have to store the word and its count. Then you have to convert those dictionaries into corresponding data frames, then fetch the top 10, then visualize it and see how it is whether you know how you know whether it is positive or negative. So, for that you are actually using the, uh, the from the collections you know default dictionary. So, here uh, what you are actually taking is you have you have three different values I mean like positive values, negative values because you are actually trying to understand uh, you know which of the category that each word is all about right. So, you are actually taking the default dictionary of integer into positive, negative and neutral values right. So, get the count of every word in both columns of the df train and df test data frames. Now, get the count of every word in both the columns of df train and uh, word the sentiment is actually only positive. So, how will you do that? So, for text and df train what you have to do you are actually checking for the uh, text positive right in the news. And now you are actually generating uh, generate n grams of text right and you are actually you know counting the positive values and you are counting here. The same way you are actually you know checking for the category negative and again you are uh, incrementing the count you are checking for the neutral and counting right. So, this is what you are doing. So, it will actually you know go through each and every document in the uh, df train. So, this is actually for the df train ok it will go for each of the values. And say if you look at the positive values our output is a dictionary list of words and new news column right news column and the count of each uh, of these words in the train data set where the sentiment is positive. So, it will just give you 
all the words and its corresponding counts where its sentiment is actually positive right so this is what is actually showing so again for the uh, you know uh, the positive values dot items if you print it will print like a, a normal dictionary itself right so that's all dot items is here it's a, it's one of the function which we use in the dictionaries right for getting the items right so it's it just prints all the key value pairs and uh, now the next one is um, say uh, uh, for the same way uh, say you know uh, so now what we could do is that you know uh, we can actually you know uh, uh, you know look for more frequently occurring words uh, for every sentiment so uh, sort in um, sort in this with respect to the second column so you are actually using the sorted function right sorted function were the positive dot items negative dot items total so this is what we are actually doing so here it, your pd1 is basically uh, you know from 0 to 10 and from 1 to 10 so like that you know you are actually you know giving this uh, uh, each one of the you know data uh, i mean like positive negative and neutral so all this for uh, each one of them you are actually doing it this is just for uh, uh, for you know for printing sake alone uh, so here actually you know what we are printing is that you know top 10 words in the unigram analysis so you could see that you know these are the words so there are certain words which are not given say here see here there is no I mean like no data here but you are getting you know very high number so this is exactly what is actually shown here and uh, when you look at the uh, this red is basically for the negative one so for the negative one you could see that you know first one you know you don't have anything then you, you are in mm so all those things are basically shown again for the new mm, neutral also you have all these things which are actually mentioned here so from this you will be able to clearly identify that for each word you know what is the kind of the uh, uh, you know if you are taking uni word you know unigram then uh, you know what is the analysis that you could do for you know neutral positive and uh, neutral positive and uh, negative now in the same way this is uh, exactly the creating the uh, creating the bigrams but here when you are actually creating the bigrams uh, just understand the only difference is you know you, you have to give the text is equal to 2 here right so that is the only difference which you have to basically do so when you do that uh, you will be finally getting this uh, detail so uh, this details also you have got this net sales so these are the words which are actually um, you know which are more uh, a positive context and these are the words which are there in more negative context and these are the words which are more there in the neutral context okay so in the trigrams uh, what you are doing to do is that you are actually you know passing it as text comma 3 that's the only difference again all the procedure and everything is all the same but here you are actually you know uh, doing and you are getting like uh, you know see ml euro is positive negative so uh, by by seeing this itself it is very understandable that you know the trigram models basically gives you more understanding because it has more phrases obviously and uh, so this gives you like more understanding about uh, the context and you know so when the number of the, uh, grams uh, i mean like n grams increases you will get better results so that is how it is actually seen so basically from this you will understand that you know you have got a better uh, you know results which is actually provided more useful information is provided by the triads so that's what we could understand from the results right so better information is basically you know uh, provided here by using the tri trigrams but that is not the case always you know you have to actually you know check on with your application to understand which one is more better for you so anyway engrams are most powerful technique it is it helps you to extract the features from the text and uh, it has got wide range of uh, applications as well and it is very commonly used in language models spelling characters and text classification pro problems etc right so hope you got an understanding about how to use engrams so uh, make your hands dirty by going through that and again i'm saying you know you don't have to develop anything from the scratch you everything is already available you have to take the data and you have the codes available you can tweak the data in the way you want and you can actually make it in the way uh, which is needed for your application so for that the main understanding which you have to require is that you know you need to know like how each one actually works so that's also if you understand like how each of the, your functions and you know how, what all functions are there how it actually works so once say here itself you have understood say for the unigram you know how it works it's the same code that we use for trigrams and uh, you know bigrams so there is no difference so it's as simple as that so thank you so much if you have any doubts or anything like that you can always get back to me thank you